Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how you can do some real fancy lettering effects in here using Photoshop Elements and also the Elements Plus plugin. This is all easy to do if you know the right steps for this. If you haven't seen the Elements Plus plugin, let me just bring that up over here. It's a plugin that plugs into the effects section and it shows up in the classics section of effects right here. And it includes lots of different tools for bringing back in functionality that is either hidden or lost from the main Photoshop program. And we'll be using a layer style effect for this. And if you have my HTG Photo Coach program for Photoshop Elements, I just added in several new articles in here covering the layers section of the Elements Plus plugin. And the plugin is only about $12. It's been $12 forever. I'll put a link for that in the description. I don't have any association. I don't get any money from Elements Plus. I just happen to like the plugin a lot. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this is done. We'll start off here with a brand new project. I'll just close this one down. Go up to File, New, Blank File. I'll leave this at the default Photoshop Elements size, which is a 6 by 4 at 300 pixels. There we go. We'll just dock that in place. And let's go over here to our layers. Let's now grab the Type tool. I have my color set at just this nice RGB cyan. Just a nice bright blue coloration. And I'll be using the typeface here, Quicksilver Italic. This will work with any good thick typeface. So there's a Poplar Standard Black. That's pretty good. This one's pretty good here. One that everybody has on their system is going to be Arial Black. Another good one here is Bauhaus 93 Regular. Anything that's really thick like that is a very good type style for this. But I'll stick with the Quicksilver Italic. You can also get a lot of great typefaces over on a website called defont.com. I've already done a video about that. And I'll put a link for that in the description as well if you want to find some more fonts. And just click in here someplace. Now, I'm using Photoshop Elements 2025, and it gives you this automatic text. It's called Greeking Text. And it just gives you some basic nonsense text in here. So you can see the size and the color, some of those kind of things before you begin typing. If you don't have that, you'll just get the insertion point. Let me show you that. I'll click on Delete, and I'll go up here to Edit and preferences, and let's just hide that little bit here, go over here to type, and I'll uncheck this, fill new type layers with placeholder text. It's now going to work like it does in earlier versions of Photoshop Elements. You click and you get a placeholder position like that. Notice will be typing in shadow. No particular reason for that word, it just kind of looks nice with the text. Choose any word that you want, and it's basically centered right about there. Now, technically centered is over here someplace because of that W pushing off to the side there. So I'm just doing it visually, which is right about here. And that looks nice. Just find a nice visual center for that. I'll be using a shadow in here and a bevel, and we'll also be using an outline. And the outline is the fancy stuff, which we'll be using the Elements Plus plugin for. Now, when you do this, we're going to be adding in a layer style and then converting that layer style. Let me show you how that's done. Go up here to Layer, come down to Layer Style and style settings. And we'll be doing a stroke right down here. I'm leaving the stroke at black, that's fine. And I have the stroke set for outside. So if I make this larger, notice how the lettering stays the same, but the stroke just gets thicker. So that's outside. And the size I want, I'll just type it in over here, is 20. Just a nice thick size. Now the reason for the thickness is that I want to be able to see stuff through that. And the 20 size gives me that. You can go larger if you want to, it's really up to you. The bigger, the more you're going to be seeing through that. Maybe I'll go up here to size 30 this time, a little larger than I used for the demo. Again, just have some more thickness to work with in here. Lighting angle doesn't matter on the stroke. Choose OK. And now we have that. Now the trick is to put a gradient into this and then blend that gradient into our background. And you can't do that inside of regular Photoshop elements. We need to somehow separate this outline from the text itself so we can then work on that outline as if it's a regular graphic. And you can do that with Elements Plus. Come down here to Effects, and it's the Layers section right here. Or, let me just close this down. You can get to it from the File menu, and Automation Tools, and Layers. It takes you to the same place. I happen to like using the buttons over here. Now the options you'll see in here are going to depend upon the version of Elements Plus that you're running, or your version of Photoshop Elements. The more recent versions have less options because a lot of things have been included inside of Photoshop Elements, like working with layer groups, things like that, used to be included here. No longer is because it's no longer needed. One that we want, though, is right here. It says Create Layer from Style. So let's click on that. Give it a double click if it doesn't run. You'll see it run right there. Okay, that's been done. Let's now go over here to Layers, 
And you'll see what happened is it took that layer style from this layer and converted that into a regular graphic layer up here. And this is now separate from that layer. If I click on this new layer here, effects for shadow, I have my move tool. I can now move this around separately. And that gives you some fun options. If you like, you know, more modern looks, kind of like this, this kind of thing, kind of interesting effects you can do in here with this because they're now separate. What that also allows us to do is to put filters in here. We can blur this, we can do gradients, anything you want now with that outline. To make the outline selected, hold the control key down, click on the thumbnail for that. That selects the outline. I'll be going over here to the left-hand panel. Let's reset our colors to black and white. Go up here to the gradient tool. And I have my gradients right now. Instead of the default gradients like this, I've reset this for metals. And I'll use this one right there, just kind of a silver metal look. Click outside to deselect that. And then I'll pull that from the upper left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner. I'm using the linear setting right down here. Mode is normal, opacity is 100, everything else is the defaults. So just pull a line like that, let go. And that puts in that gradient for you. Control D to deselect. And there we go, we now have the outline as a gradient. Let's now add a new background to this. Come down to the graphics button. And I have mine set here for backgrounds and it's by type and background. Right here at your first set, the very bottom right hand corner is kind of a purple thing. Just click on that. That loads in that purplish background. And I'll zoom in a little bit right here. And I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse for that zoom. If you don't have that set up, if you have a scroll wheel, but that's not working for you, just go up here to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general right there. And that's that checkbox right here, zoom with scroll wheel. It's a useful one to have set. Get back to our move tool and let's go back here to our layers and then back up to the effects for shadow layer right there. The shadow is just the name of that layer. That's what the layer says. Now I want to blend this new gradient outline in with our background. So for that, we we'll use our blend modes up here. And this will do lots of fun stuff, lots of different ways of playing with this depending upon which one you choose. And the one I want is the color dodge. We could go for a lighten effect, do an overlay effect, lots of possibilities in here, but color dodge is what I want. It gives us the brightest look. And the nice thing about this is we keep the gradient happening in there. That's your light and your dark part of this. It's showing through to the imagery in behind. And then it's also giving us kind of a heightened effect. So that gives us that really interesting blending in there of our new gradient outline and the background. Let's come back down to the shadow layer right here. I want to do a couple more things on this. I want to separate out the letters from that background. So I'll go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings. This time choose drop shadow and put my angle over here at somewhere around 130-ish like that. Take the distance and move this to the right just a little bit. You see a little bit of a darkened shadow happening in there. If I increase my opacity, you see more of that shadow. It just pulls those letters off of that background. And that's pretty nice right there. So I have a real small size, seven pixels. The size is how soft the edge is of that shadow. If you have a zero size, it's a real hard edge. If a real high size, it just kind of blends that out. But I think seven is a nice number for this particular project. Okay, that looks good. Now I wanna have a bevel on here as well. You can do a bevel from the layer styles dialog box, but it's a soft edge bevel. I don't want that. I want a hard edge bevel. So for that, come down here to the styles button. And our first option up here is bevels. And right here, this is a simple sharp inner bevel. Click on that. There's that inner bevel. Now I don't want that much of a bevel. So go back to our layers again. Over here where it says FX to the right of the shadow. This is the type layer. Double click on that, brings up the style settings dialog box. Here's the bevel. I can now bring that size down by just moving the bevel to the left. And I want just a little bit of one on here. And I think six works out pretty good. It's about the same size as our shadow visually. Choose OK. And then one last finishing step in here. Let's put a drop shadow behind the outline. So I'll go up here to the outline layer. That's our effects for shadow layer. And we'll again use the layer styles on that layer. Go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, drop shadow right here. And let's pull the distance out. 
and you can see the drop shadow right down here. Let's make it just a bit stronger. Ignore this stuff for now. Let's increase the size a little bit, just softens it up. There we go. So just a nice drop shadow right down there. We have all this stuff in here. We need to fix that. Let's choose OK. So we'll do the same thing again here. Let's go down to the effects. Let's go back over here to our layers. Create layer from effects. There we go. Back over to layers. There's the effects for that. Effects for effects for shadow. And we now can just erase the parts that we don't want because it's just a regular layer. So click on that layer. Grab the eraser tool. My eraser size down. That's the left square bracket key. And then I'll just erase out this shadow any place where it's inside of that outline. And that's mostly just around these letters in here. Just erase all the stuff you don't want out of that. Clean it up. And that leaves us with that shadow in behind. As long as you don't go down in here to erase that part of the shadow, it's going to work out just fine. So just work along, get rid of this inner stuff. There we go. Just a bit more over here, get the H, and then we'll get that S. And we'll finish off this whole project. There we go. And get this part of it around here, around the bottom side right there. And there we go. And that gives us that nice drop shout in behind everything. And now the lettering is complete. If I hide everything else, you can see there is that drop shadow that we left. Took out everything in the middle and just left that outside drop shadow. And again, I have step-by-step -step articles about how to use the different layer styles effects over there in the Elements Plus plugin. That's all inside of my HDG Photo Coach program. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I do new videos all the time on both Elements, also on Affinity programs. Pretty soon I'll be adding in some videos for Premiere Elements, and I'll see you next time.